Buck up, folks. It's time to assess and caress with Donald Osborne. If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Well, this episode is all about innovations and breakthroughs. I am Jay Innovation. This is Donald Breakthrough. And we have three cars here from three different eras that were innovative breakthroughs. Tell us what we have, Donald. Jay, today we've got a 1925 Cadillac V63 Phaeton. We have a 1934 Chrysler Airflow Imperial CX and a 1914 Rolls-Royce 4050 Silver Ghost. Let's start with the Cadillac. Okay. You look at it and you say, well, it's certainly an attractive car. What is innovative about this? Well, Jay, this car comes to us from our friends at Farmers Insurance. And in fact, a car like this 1925 Cadillac was the very first car they ever insured in 1928. And this is one of these cool things they did back in the day. See, to prove that your car was insured, Farmers Insurance would give you this. You put that right on there, you see. So, aha! <laughs> oh, you got insurance. You're okay. This particular model pioneered the use of a cross-plane crank in the V8, which made it much smoother than it had been before with a flat plane crank. You know, I have a 1918 version with this engine in it, and that goes down the road 50 miles an hour, comfortable. It's really what Cadillac was all about. There's a reason why Cadillac used the slogan, the standard of the world, for so long, because Cadillac was very successful. They won the coveted Dewar Trophy mm -hmm. three times, the first time for parts interchangeability, and then for the electric starter. It also was the first passenger car with front wheel brake standard, which is another very, very, very big uh, deal. And look at the size of those brakes, too. They're massive brakes They're in massive the front. They're massive brakes. And speaking of the Dewar Trophy, let's go to our next car, the 1914 Rolls-Royce. The Silver Ghost is one of the legendary cars of history. The model is actually the 4050. Right. But it got the nickname Silver Ghost from a particular car, the Silver Ghost, that ran from London to Edinburgh, almost 600 miles in top gear, which is absolutely an amazing accomplishment. They followed that up and won a Dewar's Trophy for a 15,000 mile continuous driving tour, after which they tore down the car, opened up the engine, and found no measurable wear. It was smooth, it was quiet, it reached a level of efficiency and performance that was unheard of. Exactly, and one of the things which is quite interesting about both this car and the Cadillac, it shows the pace of development in the auto industry from 1908 to 1928. Things which were extraordinary about precision engineering and interchangeable parts became the norm, right. so that Henry Ford could manufacture a car for the masses that had the features of a Rolls-Royce or a Cadillac. Let's move on to our third car. Our third car, the Chrysler Airflow. Its innovations are obvious. This is the first American mass-produced car that was designed with a wind tunnel. I understand that Orville Wright actually consulted with the designers on it. This is a classic case of trying to sell something before its time. A lot of times when they come up with futuristic cars, they're a little too far in the future and people, whoa, like this with this, People were used to this kind of a grill, you know, this big Rolls-Royce or the face. Cadillac with the thing, you know, whereas this swoopy sort of Santa Fe Express streamlined thing, it just looked odd to people. In fact, this is the only year they did what they call this waterfall grill. They went back to a traditional kind of front. It should have been the most spectacular car of the 1930s for America. But I'll show you the greatest thing about this car. You all know about this. You see, you have your you need air, there you go. Oh, you want a lot more air? Whole window disappears. Plus, this opens. opens. So, air flow, it really does. The air literally th flows through the car. But now we have to decide which one has appreciated the most. In the last five years. I think Rolls-Royce has appreciated the most because the resurgence of Rolls-Royce, much like Bugatti has revived the old name, the new Rolls-Royces are quite successful. And in the history of the automobile, this is probably one of the most written about cars of all time. So you're hitching your wagon to the ghost. Yeah, sure, why not, yeah. So, five years ago, this Cadillac might have been bought for about $35,000. Today, it would be about $80,000. The Chrysler Airflow, five years ago, a terrific one might have been $200,000. Today, a really nice short wheelbase one might sell for $160,000. Now, the Rolls Royce, five years ago, would have been about $1.1 million. Today, a Silver Ghost with its original body in a touring style would be about $1.8 million. So certainly the Silver Ghost is the most valuable of the cars here, mm -hmm. but the one that wins the appreciation sweepstakes is the 1925 Cadillac. 
All right, but the one that's worth the most is the Rolls Royce. You know, this is a argument we have every week on this show. To me, it's the one that gets you the most money. It's not that. It's the one that's moved the furthest from point to point. Oh, I still like what I said better. <laughs> Never let the truth get in the way.